Welcome to Still Works and Brewing. My name is Randy and this is a channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. So what do we got going on today? Well today what we're going to do is a small modification to my control box for my heating element inside my still. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a pulse width modifier switch so that I can run uh, my still either from PDI or the PWM. Okay, as always, there's always five things that you can really do to help us out. Uh, number one, subscribe if you haven't got a chance to do that yet. There should be a uh, icon down there. Number two, hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Number three, share us with your friends. Get the word out. Number four, uh, if you like what you see, give us that thumbs up. And number five, leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, let's get started. Today what we're going to talk about is really kind of like three main ways that, that I can heat my still up. Uh, the, the, let's say the first one is just on and off. I can hook the uh, heating element right directly up to a switch and turn it on and off. Well, that wouldn't be very practical now, would it? And last, let's say you have two heating elements in your uh, still pot. You could have one hooked up just on and off switch and then the other one hooked up to either a PDI or a, a pulse width modulator. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so you could just use that, turn it on to get, to get heated up pretty fast, you know, as fast as possible. Okay, so yes, you could use an on-off switch, but really not by itself, not in my opinion anyway. Okay, so there's number one, you got an on-off switch. All right, number two, a PID controller. And what does a PID controller do? Uh, the, the short answer for a long question, and I ain't going to get into all the, all the details, just the, uh, the gist of it. If you, you have your set point right there, okay, the PID will basically, can you see that, will rise the temperature up and it's going to overshoot the mark, so then it's going to undershoot the mark, overshoot, and then it will learn itself, it will learn itself to, to get to that set point and it does it all internally and that's just like I said that is the very 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 short answer to a long question okay so that would be the PID controller okay number two the uh, pulse width modifier is everybody knows that AC electric is a wave okay so what it does is it manipulates the wave and changes it to put the power into the heating element, okay? So the best thing I can say it's like is uh, if you take the PID on your, it's, it's kind of like your oven. You set it to 350 degrees and it will short, uh, turn on and off, right? That's, that's the short answer. The, the uh, pulse width modifier, what it does is like on your stove top when you got low to high. So if you wanted to, if you have it on low most of the time it will not, it will not boil the water. But as you turn it up, of course all the way up high it's going to boil a rapid boil. And then you can choose somewhere in between. That's basically what we're going to do here. Okay? Okay. This is my pulse width modifier switch. You can get these off of Amazon. I think I paid seven dollars for this one. Okay, uh, you just type it in, and and there's multiple you can choose from. All right. So here's our box. I'm gonna open it up. Now what I need to do is find a good location to mount that. So let me go ahead and get this switch mounted into the box, and then then we'll then we'll wire it up. Pulse width. Uh, Modulate switch in. Uh, I turn box on, and if you notice, as I turn it up, whoop, so I could, just for uh, please, you know, reference. 
See, I can turn it up all the way full and go on down to off. Okay? So, I'll be able to hook that to my heating element and we'll go from there. Okay, so I just wanted to add, you know, there's some people say that uh, PDI is the only way to go and some people say that uh, pulse width is the only way to go. Uh, I've never used a pulse width myself, not yet. Uh, I have used the PID, I keep saying PID, the PID controller. I've got a few runs under my belt with that. I seem to like it, but I do see some issues with it. Um, but I'm thinking, if I'm, if I'm thinking right, the pulse width might be kind of like using the propane gas where you just turn uh, the power up or you turn the power down. Uh, but we're going to give it a try. Okay, and then I'm going to let you know what I feel. I'll be honest with it. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I got me a, a, a mash. Now this is going to be a little bit different. What I, the mash I got going on today is I had a wine kit. So I fermented it out. So now I am going to distill it. And then I'm going to take the distillate and I'm going to actually uh, mix concentrated grape juice with it just to try to make an enjoyable uh, beverage. Uh, so I don't know what you would actually call it. I know it wouldn't be a grappa because that's made with grape skins. That's a whole different thing. So I'm assuming, I guess, would this be a brandy? Uh, leave me a message down blue. I believe it would be called a brandy, I think. Okay, so anyway, let me get set up. And we're going to try this uh, PWM switch out and see how it works. So I'll be back. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. Uh, I, I noticed the smell getting warm from uh, my box here, and the the heat sink right here it melted, and it also melted. I guess that's a capacitor, or whatever that case may be, right? Where the electronics in there, and it it burnt this up. I mean, I double checked my wiring, all that is too, it's labeled right there what it's supposed to be, so that's the way I wired it. Uh, so, I guess I went cheap, and that's what I got. Okay, we're supposed to handle it. Alright, so I'm going to take this back out. I'm going to finish this run I got going on with a, a PD, the PDI. And uh, we'll regroup and find a different solution. Uh, somebody told me to get one of the uh, a router control, which they're not too awful expensive, and they will work just fine. So I think that's what I'm going to get next, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so let me get this removed, put it back to the way it's supposed to be. And then uh, we'll finish this run of this, uh, this wine. Okay, we'll be back. Let me give you an update of where I'm at. I mean, I guess everybody has days like this in distilling where everything goes wrong. Okay, so I put in a uh, pulse width mod uh, modifier and it burned up on me. So I took it back out and I'm running this uh, batch off of the PDI, that seems to be working fine. And then all of a sudden I blow a water hose. So I had water everywhere. And the next thing it started pouring down rain. So, it, uh, right now, the PID is working pretty good. She's run steady. Uh, I got her set at 180, 180 degrees at the head temperature right now. Uh, I might bump it up just one or two degrees, that would be about it. So, uh, alright, so I'm going to let this run and then we'll be back. Okay, so we finished this run. We ended up with uh, two and a half good quarts of distillate out of that uh, 
wine kit that I fermented out. It was a five gallon wine kit. And uh, it ranged from 160 proof down to uh, 90 proof is when I stopped. Okay, so the next thing is, well, I'm going to put this into another container. Or first, I'm going to taste them all. I'm going to put them in another container. I'm going to cut it down to 100 proof. And then I'm going to add in some concentrated grape juice. So I'll be back and do that. Is I'm going to just add uh, some grape juice concentrate right to it. And we're going to go by taste. Because this is a concentrated. I'll let it melt. So let's go ahead and add some of that in. it and see what it comes out like. Still pretty hot. It's still pretty hot, so I think I'm going to go a little bit more. Let me get this other can open and I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. See what it tastes like. That's two cans of the grape juice. Still on the strong side though. Still on the strong side. I think I'm gonna need a little bit more. Uh, let me go. I have one more can that I can get. Let me. Uh, I want this. <laughs> Can't see nothing there now. Alright, we're going to get another can, because I wanted it real grapey, so I'll be right back. So I ended up adding three cans of the grape concentrate into, uh, well, 100 proof, 50, it was 50%, basically 100 proof, alright. It's got a great taste to it, real great taste. Uh, could taste a little bit like a strong, um, strong wine, maybe. Got a good grape taste to it. I think it lists a little bit on a little bit of ice. That's going to be fantastic. Okay, so the next step I do is I'm gonna put that in some bottles, and then uh, enjoy it. I guess just let it. All the flavors marry up for a few days and then uh, it'd be very good to try. Uh, okay. 
I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time.